the budget that's before us, the underlying bill, is built from the perspective of an institution. The amendment that you see before us is, is built from the perspective of a taxpayer. You know, especially those of us who have been around this building for a long time, we can figure out, if we look at every line item in the budget, we associate sort of in the back of our minds a lobbyist or a staff person or an advocate with every line item. We know that such and such a line item, oh yeah, I know John Smith, he works at that department, or I know, uh, you know, Joe Jones, and he, he's a lobbyist that represents that particular area of our budget. And this budget takes into consideration the amendment that's before you, the fact that the taxpayer is completely maxed out. The people that we've been talking about here all afternoon, the middle class guy, the small business owner, the person who has struggled for the last few years just to make ends meet, uh, this takes into consideration that person. And, you know, I forgot to mention earlier that I seem to recall a lot of people saying at the beginning of the session, jobs are our number one priority. Getting the economy back on track is our number one priority. We heard a lot of people say, you know, there's going to have to be a combination of spending cuts and tax increases and borrowing to get out of this budget deficit that we're in. And you know what, folks? There's been a lot of tax increases in the last few years. We've done a lot of borrowing to pay for operating expenses. Guess what we haven't done? There hasn't been a lot of spending cuts. And so... We need to take that into consideration and understand that the taxpayer has had it. They have had enough. They say to us all the time, you're going to raise our taxes, but you're still going to spend money, spend my tax dollars on your political campaigns? You're still going to buy bumper stickers and TV ads and Dunkin' Donuts coffee, but you're going to raise my income tax? You're going to continue to fund programs like teaching people how to use their food stamps, but you're going to raise my sales tax? That's what the average person is saying to themselves, folks. They don't get it. And you know something? I don't either. This is a budget that we have put forth here that does not raise taxes, not one single tax on any business or individual throughout the state of Connecticut. This is a budget that flat funds municipal aid, that gives our cities and towns the same amount of money that they got last year. This is a budget that responsibly cuts spending but preserves our social safety net, and this amendment is being offered over in the spending committee right now, or it will be this afternoon if it hasn't been already. But folks, we have to send a message to the world that we have had it with the, out, the, the ridiculous growth in the size of government, and that we understand that if we ever want to get this economy back on track, we have to do it by controlling our spending. Thank you.